important are it. Laurel and Hardy to you guys, and why should they be important to other people? Why are they so important to popular culture uh, in general? I think, I think, well, I think they're, they're, they're timeless, and uh, you look at their old films, there's no contemporary references, and people like the hats, by the way. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it, it, there's something gentle about it, and, and warm, and uh, it's not cynical, it's not comedy fueled by hate. And uh, I think it's now more than ever we need uh, to remind ourselves about the sort of uh, the, about the sort of joy of this kind of comedy. It's like uh, it's however much troubles they go through at the end of a Lauren Hardy film, you feel life a little bit better than before you sat down. So if we can bring some of that to the screen, then we'll uh, succeed. Why does this film need to be seen at a cinema? Sorry? Why does this film need to be seen at the cinema? Well, it's a very theatrical film. A lot of the scenes take place on stage, so it makes sense to see it in a theatrical environment yeah, yeah. because their whole, at this point, their whole lives were a theatrical environment. So, yeah, it's a good point to make, though. People should show up and experience it together. Gents, can I just ask you? Okay, yeah, go on, ask me, go on. Uh, what was the kind of biggest challenge for, for both of you in terms of inhabiting these characters? Uh, to trying to get some of the essence of who they were behind the sort of physicality, which is technically difficult, but but if you like, in terms of acting, is easy. But once you've got the physical side, it's about trying to find out who, who they are as people. Because the, the, the funny stuff is technical, but the emotional stuff is uh, more complex. Gentlemen, it surprised just you just how fragile the relationship was between Laurel and Hardy before you embarked on this story? Uh, it was a pretty hardy relationship, actually. They were together for a long, long yeah. time, and they went through a lot of ups and downs together. It was like a marriage, really. Yeah, yeah. It was, yeah. It was, but that, it was more successful than the, than the literal marriages that they had in their lives. And actually, the, the one, the one constant true, person in both their lives was each other, more than their wives or partners. Uh, so uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an examination of a, of a friendship, really, a long friendship. Um, re uh, recreating the classic standard of audio sketches, how does it help your understanding of the comedy duo? Um, uh, well, I mean, the, 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 the sort of, if you do one of their sketches, they're technically quite uh, specific, they're quite, they're quite disciplined, even though they look funny and silly and all the rest of it, they're quite disciplined, rehearsed uh, routines, and I think, well, for me, uh, learning how to do their routines, uh, although I used to watch them like everyone else watched them on TV and you laugh and you enjoy it, but natural fact, when you have to have recreate them, it makes you appreciate how technically disciplined they were as performers and how precise they were. Yeah. Thank you. And how practiced they were, how easily they made it look, you know? Yeah. It's a very unique but, uh, biopic and it's uh, a moment in their lives when they've been fractured but they've come back together. I mean, what was it about this particular script that spoke to you when you read it? Uh, well, all of that um, and just the, the human condition really, you know, and, and the kind of the longing for the past that you can't have anymore. Um, you've got to kind of realise what age you are now, what state you're in now. And for the wives, it's just the, the absolute love that certainly Lucille had for him. All-consuming love Rufus, for his welfare, we um, and uh, yeah, just wanting anyway, the best so for him. Just a love story, really, from all their love of the performing and, and the women's love for them. So, yeah. What was it like working with John? Because he really inhabits the role, both physically and emotionally. I mean, it must be great to work oh, alongside him. It was very moving to work with him life. when he was in this. Example, I've, I've seen him more in the costume than I've seen him out of it. So it was very strange when you see him out of it compared, and he's enormous compared to me, you know, but I felt very at ease, we felt very comfortable with each other, um, I liked the way he worked, it felt very similar to the way I worked, it, um, it, I just felt very, very lovely trying to find those scenes with him, so it was nice. I mean, what was it about the, the script and this particular take on it that intrigued you when you read the script? Uh, exactly what you just said, that it was kind of at the, what I thought might initially be the other end of their career to what most people would want to focus on. But it's precisely that choice that the scriptwriter Jeff Pope made that makes it so great, I think, because it's towards the end of their careers when they needed money, frankly, and <laughs> they needed to, um, you know, uh, they needed to work both creatively and financially. Uh, and it's a love story between sort of two guys, two old friends who've spent more time in each other's company than their wives, so, you know. And um, it's very moving, sort of, from that regard. Yeah. And your character, obviously, in the context of history, he was there putting this tour together yeah. and everything else. I mean, what was it about him that intrigued you and when you did some kind of research on him? Uh, there, there isn't a lot of research to do. Bernard Delphont was a producer, and the thing about producers is they're very good at controlling their image. So he's just nothing less than charming. And by all accounts, he was. Uh, uh, in the script, he's a little more 
Uh, he'd never stab you in the back, but he'd sort of give you some light acupuncture, maybe, you know. So he's, his job is to kind of um, uh, tell, the, tell the guys this tour's all going fine while at the same time pulling dates. And as an actor, you've all, we've all been there, you know. So he's, um, yeah, he's a kind of really great study of a producer, charismatic. Uh, not to be trusted all the time, but then he knows that. But ultimately, he's a huge fan of the guys. And uh, yeah, I was talking to Riley earlier, and he said, "It's yeah, there's a scene where Delphon sort of breaks down a little because he was a child once loving them." And yeah, it was nice. It was lovely. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is something as well that you're hopeful of uh, discovery for young audiences who perhaps don't know much about sound. That'd be amazing. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. I think I think it's a huge love for Laurel and Hardy but the world moves fast and it'd be great if uh, this film sort of brought people back to them because because they're very easy to tap into it doesn't feel old yeah. Yeah. tell me a little about the kind of genesis of how you got involved in the first instance I auditioned for it and I fell in love with the script and the rest is this present, not history, right? It's present. Are. Yeah. Uh, it's a it's a fascinating film in the sense that it doesn't just delve into the whole history. It delves into this particular moment, but kind of right. flashbacks and forwards. I mean, what was it about this particular story and telling it this way that intrigued you so much? Um, I'm always fascinated just by the process of any actor or any performer, but especially comedians, as far as the public and the private. And I think that the fact that we kind of are able to all as audience members be flies on the wall during their private process, I think that's really kind of magical. Yeah. And, and, and good to know and good to see. Yeah. And obviously you get to work with Steve, but also you get to, you get to work with Steve Coogan, you obviously see John and all the rest of them in right. there. I mean, what was it like to not just work with Steve, but see these two really inhabit these roles? Uh, almost, uh, quite frankly, it was surreal. Uh, the first time that I saw them in full makeup and just in the, in the bodies of these, these men, uh, I completely dropped character because I was just in awe. And I mean, I'm yeah, no, 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 I was just saying, you guys did see it, you know, on the screen, but in person, it was, uh, it was mind blowing, yeah. I imagine, yeah, yeah. yeah. And just, for, I mean, for audiences that are, like, young audiences who don't know Stan Lolly mm. so much, I mean, are you hopeful that it reaches a right audience and that young audiences do go and then discover the history of these two? I really, really hope that this inspires people to look things up because I think for any performer, seeing something like the music box is an absolute masterclass and it's so important. Uh, because physical comedy now is so different than it was then, but not the passion or the execution that, yeah. that they're masters and it's important to know that yeah it's a love story I, I was a big big fan of Laurel and Hardy as a boy uh, I'm old enough to be to remember when they played on the BBC on Saturday mornings and that's when I fell in love with them um, but I realized as I read and read about them and understood more about them that in real life they weren't as close as they were in their films uh, they had different lives they were different people they went different ways but Towards the end of their life, towards the end of their careers, um, yeah, they undertook these very arduous tours of the UK and became as close oh, through uh, travelling together, through staying in little hotels together. They became as close in real life as they were in their films. And uh, I realised there was that that was how to tell this wonderful love story. It was two men falling in love with each other in real life as much as they had in their films. I guess what is the journey you hope an audience are going to take and sit, because being such icons of the big screen, watching them now on the big screen as well is vitally important. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm with um, Stan's great-granddaughter, Cassidy Cook. She, she's here with me now. And, and on this journey, I, I, I kind of, I, I thought, well, I, I'm not going to make a, a piece of, I'm not going to make a, a piece of fan hagiography for, yeah. for, for, Stan, for Stan fans. But I want to make something that's that's got that's true to the spirit of Stan. And so, right at the beginning of the process, my great um, ambition was for the Laurel family to watch it and to feel as if, yes, that's the spirit of Stan. And so, Cassidy was my toughest audience, and uh, she hated it. No, luckily she. Uh, it made me cry, laugh, and just be very proud of my heritage. Absolutely. He brought the voice back to life, which is long overdue. It's wonderful. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is that yeah. from the Goonies? Indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey! hey.